Personal Injury Court. Good day, everyone. This is the matter of Williams versus Harris. Mr. Williams, you are suing the Harrises for medical bills, pain, and suffering for injuries you suffered when a garage door at their house came down and crashed on your head and hurt your neck. You are suing for $300,000 for your medical bills and $125,000 for pain and suffering for a total of $425,000. Is that correct? Whoa. Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. and Mrs. Harris, you all believe that this is his fault. Yes, yes Your, Your Honor. Honor. Absolutely. And, and his injuries, his bills, they're all for him to handle. Yes, Your exactly. Honor. Exactly. Okay, well, let's get into the legal sauce. Now, Mr. Harris, how did you come to be at this house? Basically, it all started, Your Honor, as when I was younger. I was around seven years old. My mother raised five kids. I was the only boy. And I really didn't have any friends. When I met Mr. Harris, when I was in school, we just connected. You know, I was... The so you guys are lifelong friends? Yes, sir. Um, I was a class clown in school, and he was too. So we just made, you know, just connection. It was over after that. Two clowns getting down. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> so we were close all through middle school, high schools. Um, I was at his wedding. He was at my wedding. He was my best man at my wedding. He was the best man in your wedding? Yes, sir. That's pretty special. Yes, it is. Now, we played football together, and, you know, on a football team, he was better to me. I'm not going to lie. You know, I looked up to him. Some of my best friends in my life I've made on the football field from fifth, sixth, seventh grade. Yes, sir. So I understand that friendship. So you all played football together. You grew up together. You're friends up until this incident. Yes. And what led you to be at their house this day? Basically, I was married for 10 years, Judge. Yes, sir. And I was married for 21. So you know how hard it can be, you know, just being married in general, you know? Well, marriage is work, but rewarding work. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I've been divorced now for three months, and it's been a struggle for me. Mr. Harris has been there for me, and he told me that he had a townhouse, you know, back in our hometown, that I can pretty much stay there. So your man was trying to help you out? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. So, you know, it says me to even really be here today. You know, I have so much love for Mr. Harris, and I still do. It's just... A... You heard that, Mr. Harris, didn't you? I you hear still it. got love for you, man. I hear it, but... Do you feel the love? And here we are. I've always had his back. It's something we learned. We grew up learning. You know, got your back on and off the field. So you always had his back. So after his divorce, I, I had his back, as I always do. I always come through for him. You were there to help him through these tough times? From grade school till now. And here we are. So, Not you now. know, I wanted to help my brother out. He coming back home. He needed a house to be in. I talked to my wife. We agreed to let him in. And sure yeah. enough, it comes back to backfire in my face. No good deed goes unpunished. No huh? good Fire. deed goes unpunished. So you, you do see that, though. Your, your man is trying to help you out. Yes, sir. Um... I wish I wasn't here today, Judge. So tell um, me what happened. I mean, you're in a neck brace. You look like you are in a lot of pain. I'm in extreme What pain. happened that got you here? I basically was in the garage, Judge, and I was going to the store. I heard a noise from the top of the garage. I look up, and I noticed that the garage door was starting to come down a little bit. So my instincts kicked in. You know, get out of here, survival mode. So I sprint. I was, what position did you play in I football? I played running back. Your running back instincts kicked in, then what did the running back do? I took off, and I was hitting for the touchdown. But what happened was I got stopped by a linebacker. That was the garage door. Oh. It slammed down on top of my back. I mean, I've been hit by linebackers, 250 pounds, but it was nothing like this pain that I experienced, Judge. You know, it basically pinned me to the ground and the door. So this door crashed on top of your neck? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, it crashed from my upper back. My, I have a disc herniation from C4 to C6. Now, y'all, this, this is your place, right? Your door. You own that door, right? Raggedy one. How, how did y'all know that this happened? Your Honor, How'd we, you find out? We didn't know about this incident until Roger was in the hospital. I imagine that given that he's a good friend, you all were really concerned for him. Exactly. I was extremely concerned. Yes, he's Honor. definitely my husband's That's good friend. She won't. Um, she didn't care. But I just wanted understanding. You, I, don't, you don't sound that cozy about no, him. No, she don't I, like me, Judge. Mm -hmm. has, has it always been that way? You know, me she and my husband like have been married for almost 10 years now. And we have a great partnership. We love each other. We That's have great. a respectable union. That's great. And we accept one another for who we are. Yes, ma'am. And right. unfortunately, right. Yeah. that included Roger. Well, you gotta, you gotta take friends and family. You know that. I endorse him. That's I endorse what marriage him. is about. We don't try to, you endorse? know, um, put restrictions on one another or anything like that. So, so you I... were saying 
that that uh, you all found out when he was in the hospital. And when I found out, I was extremely concerned. This is my best friend that I'm hearing about seeing pictures in the hospital and phone calls from the hospital. And he's hurt on your property. We do own the property. So, However, like he mentioned before, he signed mm. over a lease. He ran under the door, Your oh, Honor. But I just want to know what adult man would run under a garage door. A former running back who still <laughs> thinks he got it. Who oh, still thinks he got, he got it. it. I, I still got it, though, with Justin Portis. I was you got a Well, apparently you didn't still have it because the well, garage door tackled you, right? Well... Tell me this. If he's not going to try to slide across the goal line of this garage door, how's he going to get out of the garage? There are multiple ways, Your Honor. Tell there me. Normal people. Like a, normal people. a regular normal responsible people do run a, adult run a, use a, a side garage. door, which he has key access to. So you knew there was a side door. True? True. I mean, you'd lived there for a little while. True. You weren't blind, right? True. Or there's also a keypad. A working keypad? A working keypad, Not a working keypad that keypad. he had the code to that at the time of him moving in, we even switched over to his own personal code. Showed so him that how to work it. Showed him how to work so, it. So, Mr. Williams, you had a keypad and you knew how to work it. Key... And it worked the garage door, right? It did not work, Judge. Did you tell him it didn't work? I told him. I got evidence, Judge. So, when he says it didn't work, then... He's only got one way to get out, and that's the side door, right? Well, I forgot the code. <laughs> and he forgot the code. It did, that's why it didn't work, Your Honor. It worked it when didn't we work signed because the code. He... Well, so you forgot the code. I will say this, Judge. I forgot the code, but it's survival mode. When you see something, you got to go. So, oh, yeah, I forgot the code. So running out of the garage was survival mode? Correct. I had Could, to get out Couldn't of you have just gone out of the side door? Thank you, Your Honor. But, Judge... If the garage door would have been working properly when I moved in... You would have scored. Scored all day. Touchdown. Now, Mr. Williams, I see that you have incurred $300,000 in medical bills. Yes, sir. That's a lot of money. I'm in a lot of pain. Tell me what you've been through. Basically, you know, I've been injured at the disc herniation from C4 to C6, upper part of my back. Yes, sir. Um, it's changed my life completely. It aches and throbs every day. It's in pain right now. To further understand the nature and severity of your injuries, Mr. Williams, I've invited Dr. Karen Flood to come and explain from a medical perspective what you're going through. Dr. Flood, would you stand and step to the monitor and, and tell me what this is from a medical perspective? Doctor, can you explain the extent of the plaintiff's injuries, of Mr. Williams' injuries? Yes, Your Honor. When the garage door struck the claimant in the back of the neck, uh, it caused some injury to his cervical spine. This is an image of the cervical spine, the bones of the neck. They line up like little boxes. Between each of those is the disc, and this cushions mm. each of those little vertebral bodies and allows you, as you bend your neck forward and backwards, to absorb some of that shock. In his case, he damaged these discs at a couple different levels. That comes out and pushes on all the nerves that go out to the rest of your body. So how do you repair such a thing? Well, in this case, you actually need to take out that damaged disc. I've got a video for that. Surgery. Mm. Yes, surgery. You see what y'all so did doc, to me? Doc, explain what this, uh, Your garage. this depicts. So this depicts taking the disc out from between those vertebral bodies, between those boxes of bone, putting a spacer of bone in between those. You can either take those from your own hip or from a donor. And then you're going to put a plate on the front mm. and screw in a series of screws to hold that plate in place to allow this to fuse into one piece of bone to support those nerves and help prevent from further damage. So what's his no. prognosis after this uh, hardware is put in? Well, it depends how bad it is. Because of the pressure on the nerves, you can get damage that causes numbness into your hands. You can get weakness of your arms. You can get some chronic pain that can be persistent even after surgery. And of course, you'll have some stiffness up your neck. Okay, thank you, doctor. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Williams, uh, what uh, numbness, things in your arms, you experiencing any of that? Numbness, sharpness, tightness. Is this every day? Every day. Y'all see he's in some agony, right? Yes, Your Honor. And you wouldn't want that to happen to your buddy or simply just attend anyone. You're right, Your Honor. But you believe it's his fault? Absolutely, yes, Your sir. Honor. So, Mr. and Mrs. Harris, you all said that uh, you had Mr. Williams sign a lease. Yes, Your Honor. And that you signed. Absolutely. Absolutely. To formalize this relationship. Yes, Your Absolutely. Honor. Did you bring that lease with you? Absolutely. Sheriff Matt, will you retrieve that lease? I have it right here. Now, Mr. Williams, you, you remember signing a lease, right? Yes, Your Honor. I see here on item number 17 
Tenant is responsible for lawn, trash, windows, garage, air conditioning, lavatory, sinks, toilets, glass, and doors. Yes, sir. Now, Mr. Williams, you understood that you had certain responsibilities to maintain the property. Yes, Your Honor. But So why didn't you get this garage door fixed? Well, Your Honor, I did send Mr. Harris a text telling him about the code of the garage door wasn't working. Did and you get that text? I did. I even responded. And I told him I couldn't pay. Now, even though this is your responsibility, you wanted him to pay for it. I didn't have the money. I told him I couldn't pay. He agreed to it. I actually, I have something to... Well, again, Your Honor, let's take a look at the text. Let's take a look at the text that, that you submitted to the court. Mr. Harris, you, you're in the red, right? Yes, sir. And you wrote, how much are you able to pay for the garage door? Right? Yes, Your Honor. You expected him to pay something. As, per As he agreed. Yes, Okay. Your Honor. Now, in the gray, it says, after all I've been through, I cannot afford it right now. That's what you wrote, Mr. Williams. Yes, Your Honor. And then in response, Mr. Harris, you said, okay, I got it. What did you mean by that? I, I, barely, I just meant I understood him, Your Honor. I know what he's going through. I feel like I'm his friend. I try to bail him out and take care of him as much as I can. So when I said, okay, I got it, I mean, I understand what, what you're going What did you through. think he meant? I got it covered. That's what it says. So you, <laughs> you thought he was going to pay for it? I mean, it. yes. Yes, Your Honor. I think he's just used to me taking care of him. That meant that Your we Honor, weren't going to you... pressure you into now, Mr. Harris, fix it. Mr. and Mrs. Harris, oh, here's the legal lesson in this case. When you all sign a lease, a written lease, as the law requires you to do when you lease a place, you all got into a contractual relationship. This is a binding legal agreement where both of you have responsibilities to each other to make sure that this works out right. You were responsible to take care of the property. You were responsible to pay for this door. I know that you had texted Mr. Harris about paying for the door because you couldn't. Y'all... You were very specific in the lease, but real unclear as to what was going to happen with the door. You see that in hindsight, right? Yes, Your Honor. So both of you all knew that the garage door was kind of uh, ragged, right? Yes, Your Honor. But the lease determines your legal responsibilities, and we cannot lose sight of that. Yes, Your Honor. Gentlemen, Mrs. Harris, I think that I have heard enough, and I am ready to render my decision. Mr. Williams, from the evidence that you presented today, you've suffered an incredible life-altering injury. Now, I understand your friend is doing a good job for you. You had those uh, running back kind of uh, uh, reminiscence about getting under the garage door and you tried to make it and it did not work out. You also thought from that text that Mr. Harris was gonna fix the door. So the evidence indicates that you kind of assumed that the door was okay. Unfortunately, the move you made left you on the garage floor with the door on the back of your neck. You all did him a great favor in allowing him to stay at your home, provided, as provided in the lease, that he did some repairs and kind of took care of it. You gave him a break, he gives you a break. Y'all had no idea that he was gonna be injured like this. Mm -hmm. The reality is, though, that the law requires that everyone be responsible for what they contractually agreed to. In a personal injury case, there are three things that must be proven. You, Mr. Williams, have to prove that the Harrises were wrong and that their wrong caused your injuries. Clearly, you were injured because of that garage door. But the wrong is what is uh, ticklish for me. Here, you had some choices about going under the door. Mrs. Harris, you made the point that he could have gone out the side door, and you could have. That would have been reasonable and safe. You all, on the other hand, you knew that this door was in bad shape. You also kind of knew he didn't have the money to fix the door. He's in the midst of a divorce. I find here that there was wrong, but it was shared. That is, you took a chance that you had to pay a price, a dear price, a terrible price. You all did not have your property in good shape and therefore you're both wrong. But I do not find, Mr. Williams, that you are 50% wrong. I find you 49% wrong. And in that regard, I'm going to reduce your claim. In this case, you are asking for $425,000. In reducing your award by 49%, 
I award you $216,750 against the Harris's. What? That is my final decision, and this matter is Thank adjourned. You. Thank you, Judge. Our attorneys across America just viewed this case for the first time. Let's hear what Chad Dudley has to say. There is an interesting aspect to this case. Even though Mr. Williams was friends with the plaintiff, he still required him to sign a lease that memorialized the terms of the rent and the obligations and responsibilities of both parties. This is always the wise thing to do, especially when the act is between family members or friends. Legally protect yourself just as you would with strangers. Yeah. Notice this is a fault. Irresponsible.